Today, we're going to be taking a quick dive into a topic that many of you have requested, CPU mining. Way back in the day when crypto was still in its infancy and Ty Lopez wasn't an insufferable human being whose voice was screaming, what is this Bitcoin thing? Is it a bubble? It shot up to 19,000, but now it's down to 14,000. Is it crashing? Is it gonna keep going up? I don't know, I just have my Lambos right here. My Lambos. Please buy my courses. If that didn't haunt our darkest nightmare, CPU mining was a fairly viable way to gather some coin. But after GPUs decided to join the scene, they just couldn't keep up anymore. To this day, CPUs still can't come close to matching the mining performance of a good graphics card. But are modern CPUs really as inept at mining as I am at taking regular breaths in between sentences? Let's investigate. First, let's have a quick look at just why GPUs are better suited for the task of mining than CPUs. Processors are the brains of any operation. They excel at making decisions and are amazing multitasking. Taskers. They make sure that your computer does everything you need it to when you need it to and are involved to some extent with almost every process happening in your system. Graphics cards, on the other hand, are far less versatile. They're born to do mostly linear, repetitive tasks like rendering or other video processing tasks, and they do that remarkably well. Since mining is all about focused, repetitive number crunching, GPUs are just better at it than processors. But that doesn't mean that CPU mining is entirely fruitless. There are a few reasons why some people still like to put their CPU CPUs to work in the mines. Smaller, lesser known currencies that use CPU friendly algorithms like Kryptonite are fairly common and the mining difficulty of those currencies are mostly relatively low. That was until Vega got in on the game. That means that if you start mining one of those currencies early enough, you should be able to amass a fairly sizable collection of coins before it moons. This is also a great way to support a particular new coin if you really believe in it. If the coin doesn't turn out to be complete garbage, you should be able to make a fairly sizable chunk of profit as its value goes up. But if you're not the patient type, this probably isn't the way you would go. Instead, you can task your CPU with mining coins that are already a fairly well-established brand and valuable. Mining coins like Monero, Sumercoin, or Electronium with your CPU can still prove to be profitable enough to be worthwhile. But of course, that's largely dependent on the CPU that you're working with. You see, CPU mining with algorithms like Kryptonite beyond more cores and higher clock speeds is highly dependent on the processor's amount of L3 cash. This is because the buffer size used by this particular algorithm is two megabytes. So the mining performance of a given CPU is highly dependent on how many times the buffer can fit into the cache. This means that if you're still rocking a processor with anything less than four cores and four megabytes of cache, you'd probably be better off giving up on the idea entirely. That's not to say that there isn't money to be made with older or cheaper parts, but it's often not enough for most to consider worthwhile. Intel's eighth generation Core i3 chips, for example, while not ideal, still manage to hash fairly well thanks to their decent clock speeds, four cores, and six megabytes of cache. The i3-8100 manages a Kryptonite hash rate of about 190 hashes per second. When put towards mining Electronium, the 8100 is expected to bring in a profit of about 55 cents per day. AMD's Ryzen chips are some of the best miners in their respective price ranges, and the 1300X is no different. It's four cores, okay clock speed, and eight megabytes of cache make it capable of producing a hash rate of 255 hashes per second. That results in it earning around 80 four cents per day. Going much lower than these chips for mining just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's partly why no one with the GPU mining rig equipped with a cheap Celeron is or should be mining with that chip along with their cards. Even if the CPU managed anything approaching a decent hash rate, mining with it on a GPU rig isn't worth the performance hit. If the CPU was to be maxed out by mining while also managing the mining operations of the GPU in the rig, the CPU itself wouldn't be the only part producing less hashing power. I've experienced firsthand how badly a GPU mining rig performs when there's even a quick large jump in CPU utilization, so I can only imagine how bad it would be if the CPU was under full load 24-7. But enough with the doom and gloom, let's get into the much more interesting part of this whole thing. How much money can you make with the more capable processors? One of the best mining CPUs when it comes to price to performance right now is AMD's Ryzen 7 1700. It seems even mining algorithms love the 1700's high core count and 16 megabytes of L3 cache. Mining Electronium with the Kryptonite algorithm the 1700 overclocked to around 3.9 gigahertz and with the help of a few tweaks here and there should be able to manage a hash rate of six 
1,500 hashes per second. That hash rate means the 1,700 could bring in just over $2 per day after an electricity cost of 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Well, that's not an amount to get too stoked about. If you already have a 1,700 or one of the X variant R7 chips in your system, it's still a nice chunk of change that you might not have had otherwise, which means you're earning about $60 a month, which means that you're gonna be paying it off in about five months. So free processor, hey? On the Intel side of things, last generation's Core i7-7700K with its massive clock speed and decent eight megabytes of cache is actually a pretty good earner. Even though it comes in with half the cores of the 1700, when overclocked to around 4.7 gigahertz, the 7700K manages a hash rate of 350 hashes per second. That equates to a profit of just more than $1.50 per day with the same 12 cent electricity cost. Again, while not monumental or anything, it's still free money as long as you have the chip in your system already. And when I say free, it just comes at the detriment of your actual CPU. I also took a quick look at AMD's monstrous Threadripper 1950X because if more cores and more cash means more money, it should be quite capable indeed with its 16 cores, 32 threads, and absolutely massive 32 megabytes of L3 cache. And unsurprisingly, it totally wrecks. The Threadripper 1950X overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz comes out swinging, posting a hash rate of 11 100 hashes per second. Now it's not as much as I was personally expecting. I mean, it has double the core count of the 1700, but it comes close enough to double the performance. And with more tweaks, it shouldn't have too much trouble hitting around 1200 hashes per second. At that rate of 1100, the 1950X should currently be able to make upwards of $3.57 per day. That's just about as much as a heavily overclocked BIOS mod and a pretty well tweaked ARX 584 gig can earn dual mining Ethereum and Decred. And that means that your payoff period of the 1950 X, which is going to be $900 divided by about four, that's going to be about 150 day payoff period, which is about five months. You get a free 16 core processor after five months. I can't believe it. Mining is the best thing that's ever happened to us. I just can't believe how great mining is. Look at my Threadripper face. Ah! Clearly, there is money to be made by mining with the right CPUs. So why isn't everyone buying up all the Ryzen and Threadripper chips that they can get their hands on? I mean, it's not like the GPUs are the easiest things to find right now for same prices anyway. Well, the issue issue with CPU mining is that there are many issues with CPU mining. The biggest of these is that they can't come close to matching the return on investment time of GPUs. As opposed to GPU mining, where if things go your way, even the massively overpriced cards should be able to pay themselves off in about five to eight months, depending on the card, obviously, when you start mining all that. CPUs, however, take a lot longer. The reason for this is that while you can slot a GPU into almost any semi-modern rig, you can buy a Core 2 Duo Optiplex off of eBay and have it mined, you'll more than likely have to build an entirely new system around your CPU of choice. That means along with the cost of the processor, you also need to add the price of a motherboard, RAM, cooler if it doesn't come with the processor, power supply, a GPU if the processor doesn't have one baked in, storage drives, and potentially a case to your ROI calculations because you only get one CPU per system. After adding all of that up, you're looking at an ROI that's measured in years rather than months. Where the Threadripper 1950X pressed at $840 could pay for itself in as little as six to eight months at current profitability. After adding the cost of other components, you're looking at an ROI of more than a year because you have to have an X399 motherboard. You need at least one stick of DDR4 RAM. We all know how crazy all of that is. Sure, a year to earn your investment back and start earning profit doesn't seem all that long, but in the roller coaster ride of cryptocurrencies, a year is an eternity. Another issue with CPU mining is that it's not really scalable. Most ATX motherboards allow enough space for two full-size GPUs to be slotted directly into the board and usually also feature smaller PCI Express connectors, which you can attach risers to. This means that you can run multiple GPUs off of just one board most of the time, unless it's mini ITX. The same can't be said for CPUs. Unless you find some outlandish motherboard somewhere that features more than one CPU socket, which happens to be usually server pro uh, motherboards and not actually desktop motherboards, you're stuck with just one CPU. If you wanted to mine with say two 1950Xs, you'll need in two entirely separate systems and so on and so forth. The investment cost to do something like that just isn't worth the eventual payoff for anyone really. Even if GPUs were even more expensive to buy than they are now, they'd still make more sense than buying a CPU for the sake of mining. That doesn't mean that no one should mine with their CPU, however. If you have one of the more profitable processors currently sitting in your gaming, editing, or professional rig just freeloading while you're asleep or at work, it can definitely be worth your while to send it to the mines. The profits from doing so will likely not be enough to even buy a good coffee every single day, but at least you'll get a couple a week. And if the coin you're mining does eventually take off, that 
little something can turn into something much more impressive really fast. Now look, even if you decide to put your processor to work and start earning a small amount of coin, you need to remember that the same risks associated with GPU mining still apply here. Running any component in your computer at full load for 24 hours a day is risky business. Da -na 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 -na. Just take those out. And doing so with a component that's overclocked incorrectly or just too far is even more risky business. Da -na 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 -na. You have to make sure that if you're going to overclock your processor, you have a good understanding of what you're doing and that your cooler can handle the extra heat. And heat, as we all know, is the biggest PC killer out there. And you also have to make sure that VRMs are cooled properly because we had that X299 disaster. There's a whole lot that you actually have to worry about. And sure, with everything running smoothly, there's probably a far larger chance that you'll burn out the fans or water pump keeping your CPU cool than the CPU itself. But you need to understand and accept the risks involved in this whole deal before you really consider mining. Another thing to take into consideration is that you'll likely have to deal with a significant hit to your system performance and responsiveness while mining with your CPU. A processor that's 100% focused on mining isn't too happy with needing to handle other tasks on top of that. Luckily, this impact isn't too much of a concern with more powerful processors because not all of their cores and threads need to be utilized to produce their maximum hash rates. Utilizing more cores than available cache size actually results in lower performance. So maxing out CPU utilization isn't something you should actually be aiming for. But anyways, the question posed in this video was whether CPU mining is worth it or not. And the short answer is that there are two answers. If you already have a powerful processor or plan to upgrade to one in the near future, then sure, CPU mining could certainly be worth checking out. And even if you don't have powerful hardware, it could still be worth your while if you focus on mining newer, far less valuable CPU mineable currencies and get in on one or cl two close to the ground floor and then see it take off. But if you're looking to strike it big by mining with CPU power, especially in the midst of the current GPU drought, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you really do have money to burn and want to get into crypto mining right now, you're still much better off buying a GPU, even at their currently utterly ridiculous prices. But are any of you mining with your CPUs though? If so, which ones? What's your hash rate and are you trying to earn an ROI or just patting your wallet with a few extra dead presidents? Let me know either down in the comments or over on Twitter, I am at UFDisciple. Also, if you're looking to pick up parts for a mining rig, CPU, or otherwise, you can use our Amazon affiliate code down in the description when you're buying your next PC setup, mining, gaming, or otherwise. Be sure to smash that like button if you enjoyed this coverage of CPU mining. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers.